The votes are counted and the results are in. And it's a sweep. Kherson, Zaporizhia, Donetsk and Lugansk have all voted to become part of Russia. What happens next? Well, first of all, let's put this in a context. How did this come about? Was it Russia's goal and objective at the beginning of the special military operation to carry out this kind of sweeping referenda to have 20% of Ukraine vote to divorce themselves from Ukrainian sovereignty and become part of Mother Russia? And the answer is no. And we know this because in April, uh, the Russian government is, was making a good faith effort to negotiate with the Ukrainian government in Istanbul to come up with terms uh, to bring about an end to the conflict. But because of the intervention of Boris Johnson, at that time the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, uh, the Ukrainians pulled out of these negotiations, thereby opening the door for massive NATO intervention in the forms of tens of billions of dollars of military hardware and financial assistance to Ukraine for the sole purpose of lengthening the conflict, or in the words of United States Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin, to weaken Russia. At the time when these investments were announced, the so-called Lend-Lease program, I called it a game-changing event, that basically NATO had upped the stakes that, so that the conflict went beyond the original intent of the special military operation and had been transformed into a direct conflict between NATO and Russia. Of course, NATO using the newly equipped military of, the, of Ukraine as a proxy force. But you have to be careful for what you wish for. NATO seeking a game-changing event, Russia's gone and changed the game. By holding these referenda, Russia has transformed this conflict from a struggle between Ukrainian forces and Russian forces and their allies on Ukrainian soil to a conflict where the collective West, together with Ukraine, is threatening Mother Russia itself.